internet it is on malik aaron aaron and welcome back to box office predictions yes i'm doing this midweek because that's how thanksgiving works all the movies come out wednesday so that's why i'm doing it today anywho today we're going to be talking about napoleon so as usual we're going to be going over the pros and cons so let's get to it pros this is from one ridley scott and ridley scott has made A lot of movies, like an overwhelming amount. It's kind of insane. (laughs) But he's made a lot of stuff. You probably heard of a bunch of these movies, I would imagine. You have movies like Alien, Blade Runner. There's Black Rain. I don't think anyone ever talks about that. Thelma and Louise. There's that. 1492. I don't think anyone talks about that. There's G.I. Jane. Gladiator. It's a big one right there. Hannibal, Black Hawk Down, Mastic Men, Kingdom of Heaven, uh, American Gangster, that's a big one, Robin Hood, uh, what else do we got, Prometheus, da, 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 da. Uh, The Martian, that's his biggest hit of all time, and has he made any other hits, <laughs> I'm struggling to find them, I, mean, I guess there was House of Gucci, but not really so really scott has made a lot of movies and some of these movies have become big hits but some of these movies are big bombs so i'm gonna discuss that later when we get to the cons but really scott i mean you know he is a big name i mean i imagine most people who watch these movies watch it because he directed it so he is a draw in this case so and I'm pretty sure if this Napoleon movie was made by, like, anyone else, no one would really even bat an eye. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd say Ridley Scott's presence is a pro here, although there is a con side of that, and I'll discuss that later. So that's con, no, no, con, pro number one. Pro number two, Joaquin Phoenix, our main man here. So Joaquin Phoenix, he's been around for a long time. He's made quite a few movies. I like the more important ones. Gladiator. Ridley Scott. <laughs> right there. Uh, I don't know about Parenthood. I'm just going to skip past that. There's Gladiator. There's Signs. The Village. Uh, Walk the Line. Where he's Johnny Cash. I believe he won an Oscar for that. Did he? Or did he not? I'm not sure. I don't think he did. <laughs> I think it was it Reese, Reese Witherspoon won the Oscar. I'm going to look it up. Just in case, because I don't want to get my facts wrong. Walk the line. Walk the line. Okay, he was only nominated. We swear this one. She won Best Actors. He didn't win Best Actor. Okay. Glad I got that sorted out. And a whole lot of nothing, or nothing important after that. Joker. Obvious. Now that's where he won the Oscar. That's where he won the Oscar, yep. Joker, obviously the biggest hit of his career. Billion dollar movie. The only R-rated billion dollar hit. Should point that out. And that was like his last major, major movie. And now here he is with Napoleon. So, yeah, Joaquin Phoenix. After Joker, like his stock went up significantly. So, I say his presence here is definitely a pro. Without, like, no doubt. So... It's pro number two. I don't know about Vanessa Kirby. I know she's in this cast. I don't know what to say about her. Um, most of the stuff she's been in, like, she's kind of like a ba- a background character or like a side character. She's not really like a main character. I guess the her biggest role is that she was um in Hobbs and Shaw. I believe she was. Jason Statham's sister in that movie, I think. I never watched Hobbs and Shaw, so I can't really tell you, but I'm pretty sure uh, she's his sister. But yeah, I don't know if I'd call Vanessa Kirby a, a draw. So I'm not even going to mention her as a pro or a con. So next pro is... Uh, I mean, the advertising for this movie has been solid enough. I mean, people know about it. Mainly because of uh, all the stuff going on with Ridley Scott, how he's been reacting to people saying how the movie's very historically inaccurate, how Ridley has a very, um, 
what's the word? A confrontational <laughs> attitude <laughs> regarding that, basically just demissing it, basically just putting his hand to his his hands to his ears, going, nah, 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 I can't hear you. <laughs> that approach. Which is an interesting choice. Uh, but it's getting a lot of publicity. You know, good and bad. But you know what? Sometimes it is better to get publicity than, than, the, than to get nothing. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess publicity and advertising, I'd label that as a pro. Um, so that's pro number three. What? Is there any other pros? I guess this th Tuesday previews are pretty impressive. $3 million. I mean, it's not like Thursday night. But for Tuesday, that's pretty good. It's actually better than Wish. So, I'd say that's pretty solid. I mean, hold on. Right, I gotta compare this to Ridley's other movie. House. House of Gucci. How did that do? Because that also came out Thanksgiving, so... It's a good comparison. How Saguchi, how Saguchi, how to do the Thursday brief. 1.3 million, so it's quite a bit bigger than how Saguchi, which I say is a good thing. Seems like a positive enough sign. So, yeah, that Tuesday preview is pretty good, so I'm going to label that as a pro. And I guess another pro is no direct competition for this really i mean wish is going after a completely different demographic there's hunger games but that seems that's definitely more of a younger demographic too um salt burn but no one really cares about salt burn that much yeah th there's really nothing out there i mean in the near near future i guess there's silent night maybe <laughs> There's no real direct competition right now, so I'm going to label that as a pro. And I think that's it. I think I labeled all the, the positives. Okay, I'll now for the cons. Uh, going back to Ridley Scott. I mean, sure, he's a legendary director. Sure, people know who he is. But, man, his track record is so erratic. <laughs> it's insane. It's all over the place. I mean, just going back to his resume... Goes from making classics like Alien, Blade Runner, just legend. I don't think anyone talks about that. Black Rain, Thumb of the Louise, 1492, blah, blah, blah. G.I. Jane was a bit of a flop. You got Gladiator, Hannibal, Black Hawk Down, and Mastic Men. Kingdom of Heaven was a flop. <laughs> Huge flop. Huge dud. Good Year was a disaster. <laughs> Only made like 7 million domestically. That's awful. Then he makes American Gangster, which does great. And then his next movie, Body of Lies, is terrible. <laughs> like, what the heck? And then Robin Hood did meh in the grand scheme of things. Prometheus did all right for itself, despite its <laughs> how people feel about it. Then The Counselor, flop. Exorcist, Gods and Kings, big flop right there. Then The Martian does really, really well. The Alien Covenant was a disappointment. And then that's all the money in the world. Nobody watched that movie. Although that really wasn't Ridley's fault. That was uh, external circumstances. I.e. Um, Kevin Spacey getting fired. And for uh, yeah, me too. You all know about that. Where he was literally replaced by Christopher Plummer. Literally a month before the movie came out. They refilmed all of his scenes. With Christopher Plummer. A month when the movie comes out. Like, that's legendary. That is... That is commendable. I don't think it worked out in the great scheme of things, but you know what? I'll give you props for uh, an effort there, Ridley. And then his last two movies. Like, The Last Duel was a disaster. A huge bomb. <laughs> Only made 10 million domestic on a budget. I think it was like 100 million or so. Let me check. Yeah, 100 million budget. Yeah, fucking disaster. <laughs> and then House of Gucci just did moderate. It did moderate at best. So, yeah. Ridley Scott, his box office track record isn't the greatest in the world. It's all over the place. So, that's kind of a problem. So, we're going to... I'm going to label that as a con. Another con is the reception for this movie, which is uh very mixed, <laughs> as I'm seeing it. 
63% critic score, 64% audience score. That screams hella divisive. And that's not exactly great for box office. <laughs> because, you know, obviously you want good word of mouth. You want strong word of mouth. Having divisive word of mouth where people are like, I don't know if it's good or bad. That's 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 no good. <laughs> you don't want that. So, and there's no cinema score, obviously. It probably won't pop up to like a few hours from now. I imagine it's like a B minus or a B or maybe even a C, honestly. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised considering that audience score. So, yeah, very, very mixed word of mouth from critics and audiences. That's not a great sign. <laughs> so, I'm going to label that as a con. Uh, Any other cons? I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm really trying to think. Uh, I guess the fact that... I don't know. I mean, I guess this isn't a pro or a con, but this is from Apple TV. Or literally Apple. Apple Original Films. It's like, Sony's distributing this, but this is from Apple. Similar to how Paramount distributed uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, but it's also Apple. So this is Apple's second, like big foray in the movies after kills of the flower moon kills of the flower moon didn't do that great <laughs> um financially uh it didn't really set the world on fire but apparently it doesn't really matter how it does so i guess the same applies here because it's kind of going with the same rules like this movie cost a lot of money apparently like 200 mil from what i'm hearing although i'm gonna look it up just to be sure because the number I saw was 200 mil. Napoleon. Oh, it's 130 to 200 million. So it's within that range. Uh, So. Yeah. So the fact that this is like. Apple clearly has like a different view of success. When it comes to movies. Like for most. Uh, historically. Movie has to make a profit. Like, it has to do well in theaters. We like, two... Well, not two. Like, three times its budget to make a profit. Here, I guess Apple just doesn't really care. All that matters is that the movie gets out there. It gets a little bit of cash, which means people, you know, seeing it. And they care about Apple TV plus uh, viewership and awards. That's apparently what I've heard. So, yeah. <laughs> so, gotta mention that. And I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. I th I've labeled everything. So, opening weekend. Oof. So, we got to do three-day and five-day. Um, Judging by the early numbers I've seen for this movie, I feel like that, thir like that Tuesday preview number looks great, but I don't see it, you know, exploding <laughs> after opening day. And so, I'm going to say... 35 million 30 to 35 million for the five day weekend and it's three day will be i don't know 25 to 30 million i don't know so three day 25 to 30 actually i'm gonna have a wide range 20 damn okay 20 to 25 for the three day and like of 30 million ish like 30 to 35 million for the five day and it's total with that word of mouth i don't see this having legs at all i see this movie falling off unless it has like that controversial word of mouth like say wolf of wall street had but i don't think that's gonna happen so i don't know maybe 60 70 80 million 60 to 80 million. Let's go with that. 60 to 80 million uh, domestically for its total. And that's Napoleon. So we got two more movies to discuss. We got Saltburn and then we got Wish. So stay tuned for those uh, movies, for those videos. But yeah, that's it. That's all. Make sure to subscribe, uh, like this video, leave a comment, turn on notifications, share the whole drill. Well, check out more videos like this. Got playlists on the homepage. All previous, um, yeah, you know, all previous prediction videos I made this year or any other years I've been doing. If you want to watch any of those videos, 
go right ahead. There's also the canceled series where I go over all the movies that were supposed to come out but didn't. Uh, the last, really, the only time I discussed this movie was episode 184. I talked about it alongside Killers of the Flower Moon, Thanksgiving, Dreaming Wild, and Rally Road Racers. And that's when I got its uh, date. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I talked about it there. So, you know, there's that episode. There's now 219 episodes of Cancelled. Now, I know a lot of stuff has happened recently, like the Bike Riders, Disney had it, and then they dropped it, and now it's with Focus Features, but I don't want to waste a cancel episode on that. And I know with Scream 7, you lost your main two actresses for different reasons. One, because apparently some post about the is you know Israel Hamas war, from what I've heard, uh, because of that, and then the other, Jenna Ortega, because like her schedule just wouldn't work out because she's busy filming Wednesday season two. So yeah, Scream Three Scream Three. Scream Seven is going through some problems. Uh but it doesn't have a date, so I can't really discuss those problems. So I'm not gonna discuss anything until I get like more release date news. So yeah, but I made two hundred and nineteen episodes. So if you want to watch any of them from beginning to now, want to binge them all from beginning to now, I highly encourage you to do that. So go do it. There's also box office recaps where I go over the box office results for any particular month. November recap will come out the first week of December, so stay tuned for that. But if you want to watch, if, if you want to watch any of the past recap videos I made on the channel, you can go right ahead. And yeah, that's it. That's all. I am out. Goodbye.